Hey guys, so I just finished watching Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Actually, I just marathoned Part 1 and Part 2 today. I started at about 11 o'clock. It's just on 4 o'clock. I did stop for lunch. So it was like a massive uh, five-hour chunk of Harry Potter goodness today. And it was really cool. It was the first time I actually did the two movies back-to-back. I watched it in 4K HDR. And it scrubbed up very nicely, as to be expected. So this one picks up exactly where the first movie finishes. We ended on that cliffhanger when Voldemort was was holding the Elder Wand high. The sky was just bursting with lightning and the power was just emanating out of the wand. We get that scene again at the beginning of this movie, kind of setting the stakes. We open up with Harry sitting at Dobby, the free elf's gravesite, having just buried him after he died at the end of the last movie. We do learn that Bellatrix Lestrange was freaking out a little bit too much when she saw the sort of Gryffindor in that last movie. She does have one in her vault. Turns out it's a fake, but she did not know that. So when she thought that the guys had been into her vault, she was very, very concerned about what else they had taken. So they take that as a, as a clue, and that's their next destination. So they need to break into Gringotts with the help of a goblin who is basically in charge of the place, once again played by Warwick Davis, who turns up multiple times in these movies. So we have a wonderful scene where they're breaking into Bellatrix's vault and they're after another Horcrux. That is, they deduce that if she's so concerned about her vault being violated, then she's definitely got something to hide in there. Turns out they're right. There's a cup. There's a Horcrux cup in the vault. They break in and there's some kind of a curse on the items in the vault, as soon as you touch one, it multiplies. So they're touching everything in the vault, and suddenly we have a massive scene of all this, all these goblets and, and jewelry and treasures just multiplying and slowly and slowly filling the vault up. It's basically going to crush them to death if they don't get out of there. And the scene itself is absolutely amazing in HDR. The color differences, the gold, the silvers, all the different colors of all the jewelry and all the the treasures are just eye-popping. It's just really, really nice eye candy in this film. It looks stunning. And the dragon, which is guarding the vault, poor thing. It's like never seen sunlight. It's beaten. It's like completely white. And it looks amazing on 4K as well. The digital work done on the creatures in this movie really do stand out very, very nicely. From then, they deduce that the next Horcrux is indeed at the school in the Room of Requirement. It's a diadem like a, a tiara. So they need to go find that that next. And they also realize that because they destroyed Tom Riddle's diary in the Chamber of Seatrix with the, the fang of the basilisk, that they would use that same tool to destroy the cup, which they just found from the vault. So Hermione and Ron go down to the Chamber of Secrets. Good to see that set again after so many films ago. She stabs the cup, destroy the Horcrux, and Ron and Hermione finally get their kiss. Finally, together, after so many movies, after so much, well, not sexual tension, they're only teenagers. So they kiss, uh, finally together, and, and Voldemort figures out immediately that they are indeed at Hogwarts. So a full-scale assault is declared, and next thing we know, the rest of this movie is basically a war movie, the Battle of Hogwarts, and it, it is sick. It's amazing. After so much build-up, after so many films... The final battle is really quite amazing. It's epic in scope. We have some casualties. We do lose some of our favorite characters in this one. We've got some heroes stepping into the limelight, killing snakes with the sword. It's so much fun. Compared to the book, yeah, once again, the biggest complaint you can say about these movies is there's so much in the book that J.K. Rowling has put into them. And yeah, they're not going to transfer everything to screen. It would be just too long and there's just too much. To do so what they do they do take the best parts of the movie and the best narrative flow they can find to get the story progressing nicely and get those into the film and those character beats there was a scene in this movie where snape is calling out to all the kids in the hall that harry potter's been seen harry potter steps out of the crowd in the movie they were going to have snape and potter face off with a wand duel but in the book 
as Snape and McGonagall. So they stayed faithful to that. McGonagall steps in front of Potter and her and Snape are having the duel. And interesting to note, McGonagall is attacking him with her wand. There's magic attacking him and he is just fending off. He never attacks. He just defends himself and then apparates the hell out of there. Snape is the true hero of this movie. And I'm glad that they had that nice scene where after he's viciously killed and God is really hard to watch knowing that in real life. Alan Rickman has only just recently passed away, so it was kind of hard to watch him die in the movie. It's a particularly harrowing death. Um, first Voldemort slits his throat and then Nagini just attacks. You don't actually see the snake attacking. It's all through like opaque glass, but it does seem really, really violent and horrible. But Harry comes around to the man, he's dying. And he starts crying out his, his tears and the tears are full of his memory. And Snape tells Harry to take them all. And Harry takes the tears, pours them into the pensive and he gets the true history of Snape. Snape loved his mother so, so much that he would do anything for her, even if it meant protecting a boy who just reminded him of a man who he could not stand, Harry Potter's father who was just, according, like in Snape's eyes, was just a bully. So Snape resented Harry all these years because of his father, but I think there's a moment in this movie where he kind of just turns and realises that he does want to protect the boy. And he always was on the side of good. He was like the... He was a spy. He was, he was infiltrating Voldemort's camp and playing a very, very smart role. He, he, he was. He was good. Snape was fooling Voldemort for years. And working for Dumbledore the whole time. Go Snape. Every movie has got its place like a finely woven tapestry in this series. So much love and dedication and respect to the novels was put into each and every one of these movies. And it shows the professionalism, the cast, the performances, the music, the style. Everything about these movies is just, for me, a perfect rendition of what the book's were in spirit and having Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson and Rupert Grint as Hermione, Ron and Harry, it was just perfect casting. There's not really anybody else you can envision playing these roles now and I just got so much respect for the entire series and what all the producers and everybody behind the scenes has done and what they delivered to us. The 4K HDR in this edition, the final one, was really nice. They got those inky black levels and the HDR just really shines with all the magic, all the special effects. Beautiful. Very, very dull film. Once again, just like its predecessor, very dark. Not a lot of brightness in this film, not, toward, not until towards the end. But yeah, it, was, it came up really, really nice in the HDR. So it's really nice to have the entire series on the 4K box set. And then that little coda at the very end of the movie, 19 years later, um, Harry's grown up, married to Ginny, Ron and Hermione got their own kids and they're setting up the next generation to Hogwarts. So yeah, that's really, 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 really nice. JK did end the book on the same way, so it was nice that they did that in the movie as well. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is a stage show which is playing in London. It wasn't playing when we were there. It would have been really cool to go see it. The book adaption of the script of the screenplay was just released and I did read that while I was over there and there's talk of it coming to Melbourne in a few months so it would be really interesting to go see that. Uh, I don't know if there's talk about adapting that into a movie. If anybody has read the screenplay or seen the play and know what it's about, I don't want to go into spoil territory too much but let's just say if this was to be made into a movie with the the cast now who would be nearly age appropriate to be playing their older versions of themselves let's just say there's a real back to the future part 2 element to this story and if they were going to do it i'm not saying the technology is not there they could very well pull it off but it would be very strange and interesting to see but anyway that is my retrospective on the harry potter franchise Absolutely adored the books, adored the movies. I've seen all these movies now at least seven or eight times each. And I just absolutely adored them. I saw them all at theatres and they're just such a fun ride. And watching the kids grow up from that first movie to this last one was just an amazing experience. And just watching them grow as 
as actors and performers to see them improve from each each movie. Emma Watson kind of controlling her eyebrow acting about part four. I think she started getting that under control or losing control of it, and then it became <laughs> he got she got control of those things in part five. I think from then on. But yeah, it's just a wonderful, wonderful series of films. And like I mentioned in previous reviews, are just a real love letter to English talent. Much like the Bond films, every English actor in the nation is in a Harry Potter film, at least one of them, and just perfect. Just I just love I love everyone in these movies. They're just just amazing. Anyway, guys, please feel free to check out my movies in the order retrospectives. We've got the playlist all done now. I probably will continue, though. I want to add Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Part 1, and then Part 2, The Crimes of Grindelwald, when that comes out, into the same playlist. It's just going to be all about the Harry Potter and the Wizarding World. So the franchise is going to go on. And I'm so thankful for that because I just love the wizarding world. I love the world that J.K. Rowling has created with us. The world building has been amazing, the magic, the lore. And if it's going to keep going, if they're going to keep building this world, albeit in a different time period, then I am all for it. And I hope these never stop. Just keep on going forever. I'll watch. Anyway, guys, thanks for checking into my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Tom, let's finish this the way we started. Together! Only I can live forever.